So, uh, look, I-, I can imagine that working with Donald Trump isn't exactly the easiest thing to do, especially if you're, uh, one, number one, a career politician, or number two, a businessman, or number three, anybody who likes to have things uh, like a sort of a normal type of workplace, right? Well, from what we know about the White House, it's not exactly a normal place to work. Now, uh, one example is Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, who has had to basically adapt himself to work within the Trump White House. Now, one example of that is the, is the fact, and this is uh, uh, reported uh, by Ross Story. Again, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson says that he prints out Trump tweets and uses them to inform decision-making on policy, and specifically foreign policy, which is a disastrous idea. Now, speaking to his predecessor, Condoleezza Rice, at Stanford University event on Wednesday, at which he said the president is, quote, world-class at social media, on which he reaches millions of people via Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook with messages that sometimes his own team remain unaware of. So look, you want to say that Donald Trump has a huge uh, social media following? Yeah, that's true, even though probably a lot of them are admittedly bots um, that you can buy. Yes, you can buy followers on Twitter. No, I have not done so. Or else I would have actually a lot more followers than I do now. Uh, And you can follow me on Twitter right right down there. Uh, Anyway. (laughs) Uh, Now, Tillerson said the challenge is getting caught up because I don't even have a Twitter account that I can follow what he's tweeting. So my staff usually has to print his tweets out and hand them to me. Now, that's interesting because why, okay, why should having a Twitter account be a prerequisite for working with Trump? I know it's technically not, but he just said, hey, look, man, if I don't have, since I don't have a Twitter account, I can't really keep up with what he's saying. And the sort of the policy positions that he's taking on things that, of course, later on he switches. Now, uh, to show you how much of a time lag there is since he does not have a Twitter and since he does not follow the president, um, and since the president doesn't actually talk to them about policy before firing off a tweet, he says it might be five minutes or it might be an hour before somebody hands me a piece of paper and says, and says hey, the president tweeted this out. It'll, it allows me now to think about is, this, is it a foreign policy issue? And how do we take that and now use it. So, so understand, right? Trump, who tends to consistently contradict himself on Twitter, is now sometimes having his nonsensical tweets be used in policymaking decisions. They literally have to print it out and say, okay, what does he mean by this? Like, Kofefe? What the fuck is Kofefe? I, now I can imagine them actually having that conversation. Or, okay, so... Uh, Based on his last Rocket Man tweet, what do we think he wants to do with North Korea? Hmm. Just imagine being in that position to have to go and parse out what Donald Trump's tweets actually mean. It's insanity. (laughs) And the most messed up part of this is that, again, they have to guess what he wants because they won't, like, he doesn't tell his staff. He just goes off half-cocked on Twitter at three in the morning. And look, I've seen stories before that, you know, once six o'clock rolls around, they can't control him anymore. Once he goes upstairs, that's it. The brakes are off. The Twitter is activated and he is out there and he is, uh, number one, he's speaking as the president of the United States on Twitter. So he's representing the entire country with these insane tweets fired off at weird hours of the night. This is insane, right? This is, this is completely abnormal. Super nuts. Now, Tillerson also says that he believes, and this is funny and sad, that this is the best way of dealing with Trump's style of public communication and diplomacy because they've tried everything else. They tried sitting him down and talking, and, and, and talking about things in briefings. Well, he has no uh, attention span, right? He gets bored very, very easily. So first they tried to do the briefings, uh, shorter briefings, right? Things like, uh, you know, half a page with killer maps and graphics. And, you know, they put his name into the middle of it. That didn't work. They shrunk it down to tweet size and put his name in it. That still didn't quite work. So, and, and, and now, 
we know that he has cut that he's having actually less briefings and less less meetings throughout the day. And he's actually working far less than he was before. Again, what he, he's got executive time in the mornings where he watches Fox and Friends and then tweets out things that mirror exactly what was said on Fox and Friends. And then he calls his, his buddies and talks to him about things. <laughs> like if you want to talk about who's uh, who was the leaker. It was him. By calling his friends and talking about these things, these friends would go and talk to the press. So he's the, he's the White House leaker. It's amazing, right? But anyway, uh, Tillerson, he continues. Right? He says, now on the one hand, you could say, well, that's nuts. Yes, 100%. If you just left it there, if you left it there, I would have agreed with you 100%. But this is about him not having a Twitter account. He says, why don't you get an account? But on the other hand, I've actually concluded that that's not a bad system because it goes out and I don't know what's going to go out. So there's not a whole lot I'm going to do until it's out there. Talking about the tweets. So look, this is somebody who's pretty much given up. He knows President Trump. You can't control him, right? He's going to tweet out random things while, you know, and, and, and what Tillerson is going to do is he's going to sit there and he's going to wait for it. Right. And then when he sees about Kim Jong, something about Kim Jong Un being tweeted out or something about the UN, then he's going to take that or his staff is going to take that, print it out, and then they're going to have to go and, uh, <laughs> and, and decipher it. it. What the hell kind of White House runs like this? This is unbelievable, except that it is completely believable because we have taken the abnormal and turned it into the normal. And I know, like, I have fallen into that trap as of late. Things that are completely insane. Now, I, I read the story, and I read this story, for example, and I'm like, well, of course, that makes sense. And then you think about it for a couple of seconds, and you're like, wait a minute. No, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. That's not normal. This is not how a country is supposed to run. Like, there's no competence here. This is insane. This is absolutely insane. This is not what smart people, very, very smart people, or stable geniuses do, okay? But again, while it's not normal, it looks like we've all adjusted to it. For example, Tillerson, he says that he has taken time for himself, that it has taken time for himself and the president's staff to become accustomed to the Twitter activity. Again, they're not putting a stop to it at all. He said it was very unconventional for all of us, but he says that he realizes that it's just his way of wanting to communicate on the subject. So instead of walking, I don't know, I don't know how far it is, right? But instead of getting your fat ass up off the bed, away from your three TVs, watching Fox News and CNN and the stuff that you claim to not watch because you hate, instead of getting up off of there and actually going and talking to your staff and going to meetings and actually doing your job, no. It's just easier to tweet out random nonsense and ridiculous bullshit positions that make no sense in the real world. And by the way, a lot of these tweets, again, they're all about making fun of somebody or picking a fight with, again, North Korea. The Rocket Man. I got to make fun of uh, Kim Jong-un. I got to make fun of Rocket Man. Look. This just shows that they've given up. They, they have tailored themselves around Trump, and they've decided that, you know what, we're going to make this normal. Okay. Look, But look, this is not the way to craft policy, and I, I'm actually really worried, not just about Trump. Like, yes, Trump is Trump, right? What's going to have to happen afterwards? What's the long-term effect on our system going to be after Trump is gone? Will there ever be a normal or... Is crazy the new normal? Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.